Welcome to another episode of Next Up, where we're talking about the four C's behind the business of child nutrition. So last episode, what did we talk about, Nisha? It was about collaboration. It was about collaboration within a department, outside of a department, within your community. And I think also with, with the students as well. And yeah. so I learned a lot, did you? I learned a ton, but this episode I'm really excited for because we'll be talking about culture. And I'm all about comp company culture, program cultures, culture in general. And one of the things that Shannon talks a lot about is not being afraid to fail. And Nisha knows me and I love to fail because if you're not failing, you're not trying new things, you're not innovating or taking chances. Well, I can't wait to hear what everybody else has to say. And so let's get to that episode. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be back here with you guys among <laughs> superheroes. Uh, today we're gonna talk about culture and the culture of our departments, of our districts, of the world, whatever you guys want to talk about, we're just going to spend the next, I don't know, 30 minutes talking about culture. Who wants to start us off? I'll pick on you. You know I will. I'll Somebody. start on this All one. Right, well, How's that? Okay. Uh, culture in our district, uh, superintendent is big on what she calls mission possible. Okay. So we're all about the kids, plain and simple. Okay. Whatever it takes we're gonna be there for the kids, whether we're educating them, transporting them, feeding them, making sure the facilities are the way they need to be for our kids. That's what it's all about in our district. Now in my department, we have a motto that we use, one team, one goal, no limits. Mm, yes. And that is something we truly believe in to where whatever it takes to feed kids, as we talked about in our last segment, we're gonna make it happen. Everything else is secondary. Paperwork, everything else we gotta do, but the main focus is feed our kids. So I just have to know, like, when you have your team meetings, is it dun, 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 dun. Like, <laughs> like mission possible music? Do you get like, uh, no. come on now. <laughs> My staff would probably say he has way too many meetings <laughs> every day, but we collaborate so much. So, but uh, no, when we all get together, again, everybody is focused on what the mission is and what do we need to do to make this happen. No Tom Cruise invited out as a guest speaker <laughs> in Florida. Uh, no. I'm just saying. No jumping from helicopters. No, none of that. You didn't like fly that. in. No. I expect that at the no. next state conference in Florida. I don't Florida. think our workers comp uh, leader there would be too happy, so. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a consistent theme, right? Feed kids, because we're the same as well. Everything is about feeding the kids. Your point of sale doesn't work, just feed the kids. We'll get through it, we'll write down numbers, write down names, whatever you gotta do, but the end user, our customer, the, the student, we gotta make sure that it's seamless for them in every, every form possible. I always tell my team, uh, if, you, uh, if it's not illegal, yeah. immoral, or unsafe, <laughs> we do it. Because that's what our mission is, all in for all kids. And so let's get it done and then we will worry about what happens after that. Um, sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness and ask mm -hmm. for permission. And sometimes, you know, you have to do, the, the right thing to do isn't always the easiest thing to do. And the easy thing to do isn't always the right thing to do. Right. And Jessica, last, last, last episode when we were together, you talked about state agencies and really supporting that. Mm -hmm. and I love what you just said about uh, the, the point of sale, right? Because a lot of times we get caught up in, oh my God, we can't. And so even before COVID, right? Like people, our, our frontline workers would be so scared that they didn't have the rosters and stuff like that. And state agencies, I feel like if, and you can expand a little bit what you said, it, it's as long as you're tracking it and you, you know, you're focused on feeding the kids and you document what happened, the system went down. You know, our state agencies are there to support us and they're not there to do an I got you. But it's, uh, they really support us. We're like, we had to feed kids. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think that, um, I, I, I don't think I mean, speaking just for my state agency, that right. all state agencies have been so supportive and have been really great through all of this. They're willing to answer questions. There's been times, it's been Saturday at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I've texted my state agency director, and bless her heart, she hasn't responded to me, but the next morning she's like, hey, you gotta get some sleep, first of all, and turn your head. <laughs> 
<laughs> but she's always there to answer that question. Mm. And if it's something she doesn't know, you know what, what I love about this is it's it's I think it's part of the culture of child nutrition. She's like, I don't know the answer, but I'm gonna find that out for you. I'm gonna find a way to make this work for you so that you can feed the kids. Let me figure out what we can do, not focus on what we can't do. Say that again <laughs> for people that are watching what you what you can do, not what we can't do. Right, we don't need to focus on what now, we can't do. No, I think a lot of times. Right, 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 right. right. And, and it's okay to have your little pity party. It's okay to have your little, you know, vent sessions. But eventually, we all got to put our big girl panties on, big boy panties on. <laughs> and and <laughs> right, right, whatever. Okay, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> whatever you decide. We won't put you on the spot, right? No picking stuff be, up, remember? You be you. You be you. But then we got to go on, right? right. We got to right. move on. We've got to do what's best for yeah. our kids. Mm -hmm. We and call it get to yes. Yeah. Get to yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out. State agencies you talk about, they always tell us we're going to use a common sense approach. Mm -hmm. And how refreshing is that? They'll help Fair. us figure it out. Okay. Because uh, again, when push comes to shove, they're right in there with us. We have to feed the kids. Mm -hmm. I That's tell my staff. I tell my staff, you know, yeah, it's change or it's something different or, you know, mix it up just because it doesn't work doesn't mean that you know, there isn't another solution. So try it out, try it out for a day, for a week. If it doesn't work, try something else. Don't be afraid to just kind of keep making waves and making changes. And it's so important to listen to that frontline boots on ground staff. I think so many times they've mm -hmm. come up with the best solutions, yeah. the difficult problems, and they bring it up to us. And it's like, that's wonderful. And, we, and I think one of the, the jobs we have to make sure we do is really give them credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. This wasn't a Jessica idea. This wasn't a you know senior office Ivy Tower idea. This was something that came from our boots on ground who were there working in the trenches and are doing God's work every day to feed our kids. Mm -hmm. And they come up with the most creative solutions sometimes. Yeah. And, and you know, like, I'll say, why didn't I think of that? That's genius. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this manager is doing this in their school. Oh, yeah. It's really effective. And I'm sure she would be so happy to tell you what methods worked for her and how mm -hmm. she got to it. And you know, the do's and don'ts of making it seamless. Yeah. So that way they can also train their peers as well on some cool ideas. They seem to be doing it on a regular basis right now. And Katie, you mentioned you're a chef. Uh, basically all our managers, all our employees are chefs right now because with the supply chain, mm -hmm. okay, this is what's supposed yeah. to be delivered to you, oh, but yeah. it didn't, something else did, but they still make it palate pleasing, okay? Eye appealing and the kids will eat it. Okay, so again, there's that problem solving. Right down that, that recipe. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Put it down. Yeah. I tell I tell all my staff, I'm like, that production record is a receipt. You just need to be honest on it. Don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. The government wants to know where we're spending their money. Give them a receipt. If you only used, you know, a quarter cup or you use three cups of something, you know, put it down. Just give them the receipt of what they did. Hand write it down and then we put it in the computer later. You know, I, I tell mm -hmm. my staff if there's something about a recipe that doesn't work or you have a better idea or a better flavor, you know, yeah. idea, I'm not attached to these recipes. I'm attached to what you think the kids would like better. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Well, and I, I'm going to go back to something you said, Katie, when you first were going around and you talked about, and it, it really talks with culture. Some of it, I, I was a kitchen manager, and my first year as a kitchen manager, I was terrified because of the regulations <laughs> that were out there. And so I was so afraid to like make a decision out of the box. And I think that goes right back to culture for our kitchen managers. You know, I've only been a, a director, this, I'm going just starting my fourth year, and I think them overcoming, throw the food away if you overcooked it throw you know it's worth it to have the trust of your customers mm -hmm. to empower our kitchen managers mm -hmm. and our frontline staff throw it away if you wouldn't eat it throw it away don't I mean we're bringing in these great quality products from our industry partners but the love that they cook it with is really what goes out to the kids they're giving us you know in the COVID they pivoted like you guys said last episode pivoted and created these great products for us right, right. If we don't cook it right we don't cook it with love it goes out and I'm like you guys throw it away oh the, the, the money and I'm like okay the money you're gonna cost that fear that they're scared and I was a kitchen manager so I get it and what kind of culture are we creating to go and so when I go out to kitchens and I see something I'm like nope let's throw that away oh <gasps> you can't throw. I'm like it's burnt pizza it's going yep. in the trash right. well their pride in what they're serving mm -hmm. goes a long way confidence 
will get you so much further. And if they're confident and, and prideful in, in the food that they prepared for these kids, the kids are going to attach that. They're going to see it. They're going to feel it. You'd be like, oh man, I, you want that you know, enchilada. I made that myself with love. You know, that kid's going to take it. Mm -hmm. You're persuading them mm -hmm. with your confidence. And they're it goes like back restaurant to managers. Yeah. I mean, that's it. 100%. You mentioned you had yep. your background, restaurant tours. So I, I agree with you. What makes you think that child would eat that if you won't? Mm -hmm. okay? But that's our responsibility. And empower them to they can make these exactly. decisions yeah. and throw it away, Amen. document it as a food loss, yeah. and we Put move it on. on. The Next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all make move mistakes. On. We all Absolutely. make mistakes. And that's our responsibility to make sure that they feel empowered. Absolutely. And they feel comfortable and they know that we trust them to make the right decisions for their students. It's that culture. It is. It is. It's, that, it's, that, it's, it's making sure they have the employee experience yeah. like we want our customers to have that experience as well. It's appreciating them. Uh, you know, Cincinnati is such a diverse city. Um, you know, if I put, I've got to really make sure my managers have that, uh, you know, empowerment to make the decision of how to make that food appealing for their students. Mm -hmm. uh, putting basil and green beans on the west side of Cincinnati is going to make the kids go, what are those green things? But if I put it on the east side, those kids think it's like, wow, bougie, you know? Mm -hmm. But so I got to make sure my managers know it's okay as long as you're keeping within some certain confinements of, you know, not to completely changing the nutritional profile, it's okay. Figure out what your kids like. Take that feedback and run with it. 100%. I love what Jessica just said because we talk about culture. It's the culture of your community. Mm -hmm. Where you just said basil on one side of your county is not going to be the basil on the other side of your county. There are city school districts. So you got to know your customers. Whoa, whoa, know. whoa, 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 Roy. You're thinking outside the box here. Are you saying <laughs> doing two different menus? Uh, for possibly two different parts. Whoa, 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 whoa. And you might not be that lucky to be able to do that, but you can season possibly a little different, yeah. okay? So and stick with the, 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 the shell and then tailor it to Correct. your community. Correct. Mm -hmm. But even thinking even more so outside the box, when you go back to restaurants, right? And this is something that I that is on my passion list. I haven't done it yet, okay? Because my people are, my, my folks are like, no, Shannon, too much work. But literally, we are restaurants. And a restaurant on a certain part of town is going to be more successful. And so why couldn't we possibly start thinking outside the box? And yes, seasoning is a start. But also, how do we meet the needs of that customer and write different menus that this kitchen manager, and you know, it's going to get into the I can't, mm -hmm. right? I don't have enough storage space. Okay, but how can I? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we're like, how can I? And we as directors, it is our responsibility to do a culture of, what is that gap? How could we be restaurants, you know, 63 restaurants, different restaurants. And I'm not saying that five or six of them can't have the same menu, but different days of moving. Like my mind just goes into what could we do mm -hmm. it's differently? Like, it's One product, but we do it different ways. It's not just thinking outside the box. It's taking that box and tearing it up, crushing sure. it, and stomp on it a couple times, right? Why do we even have a box to begin with when we can really make sure that we are providing the absolute best food for our students? Yeah, and I, and I think it goes back to a culture of fear mm -hmm. or, like you said, the can-do attitude. And do we let what's always been done, oh, that just makes my stomach, mm. Mm -mm. what we've always done versus what can we do? What can we do for these kids? Why, how do we become their choice? And in business, it's always about meeting the needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. And our customers are not the same on one side of town to the other side of town. In your district, your smaller district, and your, uh, how many schools do you have, Roy? Uh, we have 21. 21 in your medium-sized district, in your ginormous district, whatever. <laughs> um, but I mean, there are customers are not the same. Mm -hmm. So how do we meet the needs of our customers like trying to do that. And it could be like in our elementary, we have f three or four choices, but what about if that one choice was just a different, right? Mm -hmm. we, had, we had the staples district wide and then one choice that was different. It's a matter of listening to your managers. Yeah. I, again, I think you all had mentioned getting the feedback from that, what's working and what's not and break down that wall of fear. And why are they fearful, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think they're fearful of a person. They're fearful of failing because yeah. they're so caring, okay? And they wanna do a good job, mm. not only for us, but for the school district and the kids. 100%. So you gotta let them know it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. I can 
raise my hand probably as high as I can get on how many times I've failed at things. But again, how you get up from that, change that, and we move on from it. We don't harp on it. Move on, we'll fix it, and get back to yes. Well, failure is always an option. How else do you learn? How else do you grow? How else do you improve unless you learn from your mistakes? And lots of times, you know, we try a lot of different things and we throw them against a wall and some of them stick and some of them don't. And it's focusing on the ones that are on the wall, not the ones that drop down to the floor. And that's exactly right. Well, and failure, I don't know about you guys, but failure growing up was terrifying. Uh, being an athlete when I was in high school and, and doing different stuff, you didn't want to fail. You didn't want to fail for your team. So it is creating that culture. And I have found when I highlight the things that I fail about, it's hard for me. I'm not going to lie. It is, it is hard for me to go, I failed here. And do it in front of my team and tell them that I did it. Yep. Because the more I'm transparent and the more I put myself out there, the more they're willing to take chances. And that is developing our mm -hmm. culture as directors and our leadership teams. And it's like, I want to ask my leadership team all the time. I say, what'd you fail at today? What'd you try that didn't work? Like, I want you to go out and fail. And if you're not doing it, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not challenging the, you're going the, through the yeah, motions. you're just yeah. going through, you gotta, you gotta go out and fail. I asked my, my staff, I'm like, you're gonna have rough days. At the end of the day, sit down and have a powwow. Why, why was that hard? Instead of focusing on, oh, they did this, or this, this isn't working, or whatnot, put some ideas together. So t tomorrow, it's a better day. Mm -hmm. Learn from your mistake and move on from it. But let's not focus on it being a negative thing. Let's focus on it being, okay, well, we, we tried that. And that didn't work for obvious reasons. Well, this is why it didn't work and kind of problem solve. As a chef, that's kind of where my brain goes when I make a recipe. Well, that didn't work because I didn't do this, that, or the other thing in the step, right? Doesn't mean that I'm a horrible chef. It just means that that one recipe, I just need to improve a little thing on it. And we call that the plus delta. So we go through and we figured out what was great and worked really well. Those are our pluses and our deltas. What are the things we need to change? Mm -hmm. Not what are the things that failed. Mm -hmm. What are the things we need to change? Where are opportunities to improve upon? Yeah. One of my supervisors, he really struggled, and he's probably going to watch this and be like, or what could be what, and be like, Shannon, you really, you really said it. Yes, yes, I did. Um, could not. We have a, a pillars as leaders, what we have, and I have failure on there as one that we need to do. And we, we wrestled with that thing for like a week. He's like, we're not putting that on there. And I was like, oh, oh, oh but we are. And, you know, it, it, to me, my son's a chemist, one of my sons. And he probably put in 30 or 40 interviews or applications before he got an interview right before COVID happened and all the other stuff. And I was like, so how many failed today, son? You're, you're, you know, and he was like, really, mom, I'm a fa And I was like, yeah, welcome to the world of failure. It's trying. And I was watching, God, I can't remember. And you can't have success without failure. They're not absent mm -hmm. of one another, yeah. right? So if we're going to be successful, we've got to fail. And if we're not failing, we're not trying. We're not doing other things differently. And they're watching us, right? Oh, yeah. They're watching us. And if we don't admit to our own, oh, yeah. you know, if we're not authentic in our own evaluation of how we performed, how are we putting that expectation on our supervisors, our managers, mm -hmm. or even our students? They're looking at us because we're all educators. Mm -hmm. We're being the role model for our students, too, to learn how they can move through life and be successful. I just want, uh, and we talk about that, and failure is. It's okay to fail. But what we try and focus on is all the positives. Yeah. I use uh, a thing that I learned uh, from a book that I read called The Energy Bus. It's called Ooh. The One oh, Great yes. Golf Shot Theory. Okay, For those that like to play golf, I like to play golf. What makes that unique is when we're talking about a round of golf, nobody talks about the 72 or 80 shots that I hurt, hit bad. I always talk about, did you see that one putt I made on the 18th hole? Well, not the others. So we're too programmed when we go home mm -hmm. in the evening to think about all the things that went wrong for the day instead of before you lay your head on that pillow, think about the one great thing that happened. Could be a phone call that you have with somebody. Could be an interaction with a student or a child or your, somebody at your own house. So focusing more on that one great golf shot that we talk about is something we try and uh, push towards our employees there. Don't always focus on the negative. There's so many of those. Oh yeah. yeah, it's easy to do. Sometimes it's a progression to get there too. One of the things we talk about is making the sandwich, right? 
you say the positive thing, you get the negative thing, but you always end on a positive thing. So you're making that sandwich as you transition to making that just be all the positive and the, the deltas that you can change and improve on. But sometimes you kind of need to be like, this was really great, this really wasn't, I just need to get it off my chest, but this was really great. So you're always ending on that high note. Absolutely. Walking away positive, walking yeah. away high. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So culture of creativity, trying different things. As we finish up today's uh, episode on culture, tell me something in your district that you're ready to try. Let's, the people that are watching, something new that you're going to try and do that might be a little bit different, or you've already tried and it was really successful, but it was out of the box. And a culture that you went out and you're, and you're trying something new in your district. Let's end with that. Who wants to go first? I'm really focusing on employee engagement and really being responsible to myself for doing it. So how, what are ways out of the box that I can keep my employees motivated and happy and giving each other recognition, mm -hmm. right? Like, how do I encourage that? And, you know, I'm doing all this research and, and reading and all of it's really repetitive, but I'm like, no, I want something, I want something different. I want something out of the box. I want something that's not gonna be the same month after month, but something that I can kind of build on and expand on. So that's what I'm approaching. Uh, I want my, my, my family, my work family to be happy and wanna come to work every day. I don't want turnover. I wanna keep them there until they're ready to retire and then maybe snag them as subs. You know, Culture the of recognition. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I think ownership is one of the things I really wanna make sure that everybody feels that they are empowered to take on and have. Um, you know, I, I, I think people know I'm pretty transparent and pretty authentic and I'm, I'm really um, always able to, to share what I have failed at and one of the big things I still struggle with to this day and you think I'd have a handle on it is delegation. There's some things I just like to do, but you know what? There are people on our team who can do it way better than I can. So it's really being able to say, you know, I'm going to let this go, I'm going to give ownership to you and I'm going to let you run with it and let you improve on it. So that's one of the things I'm challenging myself to do. Looking more towards um, sharing our message with our community and people out there. I was fortunate uh, they have a group called uh, uh, Future Leaders of Citrus County where I work. And uh, they wanted food services to speak on what goes on in the school district. And we opened the eyes of so many of our future community leaders on the challenges that we all face mm -hmm. and the great people. I tried to tell them, hey, this is the greatest school district you will ever see. You all are not familiar with another school district because you've never worked in another mm -hmm. school district. But be proud of what you're doing here. Your kids are in good hands. And it's my job to get that message out there a whole lot more and let people know what we're about, mm -hmm. okay? and the great kind caring people that we have and your kids are in good hands and you can sleep at night. That's awesome and that kind of takes me back to the marketing piece that happened back in February that Next Up did with uh, Tyson and Linked when they were talking uh -huh. about marketing. One of the things that came to my mind when I was watching that episode last month or whatever was I want to do a mascot for my department and I want to be out there at sports games. Mm -hmm. And so can you imagine me running around in a grape suit going, here's nutrition. So that's one of the things that sometime down the line at an SNA conference near you, maybe, I don't know, or maybe another conference, I might be running around in a nutrition service mascot. Conference. Or maybe it's the next installment of, I mean, of our series. Yeah, maybe. I might have it. Not be that quick though, Jessica. Be not careful that. Disney's not there. They might swoop you up. I there, know, okay? I know. I would love to work for Disney. But yeah, have fun. Culture of fun in my department. Thank you guys for being here. I can't wait for our next episode and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. So thank you everybody for watching this episode of the four C's behind the business of child nutrition. We spoke about culture and Nisha, what was your favorite part about the episode? You know, you were absolutely right. Jen did talk about failure, but the aspect of turning it into positivity, right? Making sure that at the end of the day that we're not just focusing on the negative, that we're, we're striving towards positivity, we're actually being able to grow and learn from it. Um, definitely something that hit close to home, because I talk about that a lot too. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was a food service director or a child nutrition professional, where could I find more information about 
the business behind child nutrition. Absolutely. So Link's business guide is available to download, and you can download it right here on this link. And so thank you so much for joining this episode. We'll see you next time. See you next time.